Hi, Doug Johnson with the Versatech. Today we're talking about undermount condensate pump for ductless installations. First of all, I want to show you what's in the box. It's exciting and a brand new product. The sleek, very small, in fact, to my knowledge, smallest in the industry, undermount quiet mini. The pump is complete and is fully automatic. More about the specs in just a second. We have the instruction manual, very important as far as assembly and also uh, running and maintenance. And third, we have all the screws necessary to mount the unit on a sidewall. A little more about the Quiet Mini. It's a new, quiet design. And what makes it so quiet is our new technology called Quiet Piston Technology. This ensures quiet operation. And for all you numbers guys, that's 21 dB. It's dual voltage, 115 or 230 volt, and this little package carries a lot of power. 26 foot of lift and 7.7 .7 gallons per hour of pumping capability. It has a removable reservoir for easy maintenance. Let me show you. We'll talk more about it when it's mounted on the wall. Your reservoir is here. Your quiet piston pump is here. You have your power line, and then also this is your discharge line on the unit. Now, to, for maintenance, there's a little switch right here, a button, excuse me. You push that in. This drops down for easy maintenance and cleaning. You see here we have our float switch and is protected by a wire screen so that no interference from the incoming drain from the mini split head. So anyway, to put it together, you just push it in like that, pop back into the slot, which is right here, and you're off and running again. Okay, this is also built with an overflow switch. So if we get to the point where the primary float switch fails, it does have overflow protection. And this single unit can be used up to a 54,000 BTU unit. And again, for you numbers guys, that's 16 kW. We have a, a demo here that is going to show you both the front and back of the unit. Now right now we have the shell off of the unit and we're looking like there's an invisible wall here and we're looking back at the indoor head. You'll notice here that we have the drain line that's normally tucked up inside when they ship the unit and again we've brought it down like this. Now there are several types of configurations for drain lines. They can come out either side or they can come down. Now in this particular installation, we're going to do a right hand down installation and we'll walk you through that. Now, as before, here's the unit itself. All right, I'm going to take it out of its cover. And you'll notice here that there are four rubber grommets on this side of the unit and two rubber grommets on the other side of the unit. So in this particular case, we're going to mount a down unit such as this, and it's important to know that these four grommets fit inside this case and always go to the case side. So the two grommets will go to your wall, okay? That's covered in our installation, but again, sometimes they uh, we do get a couple of calls in, uh, well, gee, how do we uh, get this thing to uh, fit correctly? All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to show you the electrical. Again, see these yellow tags? They are extremely simple as far as telling you what does what. The light blue lead, and we'll get uh, into that in a minute, is your common. Your brown lead is your hot and the two black leads on here are for your um, uh, safety switch or also what is more common is look on your manufacturer's manual and check the and break the temperature sensor line on the AC indoor unit. So what I'm going to do is uh, we will fish that wire up through here 
and we will go from there. Now, once we have that, we establish that we have the wiring and it will fit properly, then we go ahead and mount this to the wall. You'll see that we do have holes to put the screw through to the wall, and we do have the installation hardware in the box. Okay, now we've turned the unit around. So this is what the head without the uh, decorative outer shell looks like hanging on the wall. Again, this is bare bones so that we can show you a lot of the interior work as far as how we're chasing lines and connecting the condensate drain. Now, first and foremost, I want to really make it clear that you turn off the power to both the indoor and outdoor units. Now, again, the, the indoor head is fed by the outdoor unit bringing power in. But again, in some cases, there's a three pole wall switch for the indoor. So again, make sure all power is off before you go forward from here. So what I've done is we've, we've we've indicated or simulated the unit on the wall. I'm gonna pull it out here so you can see it better in just a moment. We chased the leads through, and again, the light blue is your common, the brown is your hot lead, and the two blacks are your, uh, for your safety switch or breaking the temperature sensor of the air conditioner. Now, that particular part of the install, you're going to have to refer to your manufacturer's manual. And I'm purposely not going to connect to the uh, power block here because, again, it will be different with every manufacturer and you want to check on that. Easy to do. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to... We had, as I showed you before, this was tucked up on the back side. We dropped it down, and essentially we want to go somewhere about uh, two inches below for an easy drain line. You'll notice that this is insulated because, again, it's cool or cold water coming out of the out of the head, and again, that will condense on the outside as well. And again, it's like a glass of uh, cold iced tea. You know, you don't want that exterior con uh, condensate occurring either. So what I'm going to do is I've already pre-measured about here. I'm going to cut the line. And so now, now we have the insulated line and it's a 5 8 drain line. And because we are again in a right hand configuration, we're going to add that pipe right into here like so. Now again, I want to point out that you want to be sure that these four holes are, or excuse me, the four grommets are facing outward, okay? Because when the cover goes on, there are pins inside there that will hold everything in place nice and tight against the wall. You also want to make sure that you don't cut a lot of condensate line down inside here. You only want to lap, it, overlap here about three quarters of an inch. If you don't, you could run the risk of interfering with the internal float. There is a screen in between, but it could be possible. And again, we want to make sure that we have proper installation. Okay, now what I want to do is we're, we're mounted on the wall. We have our condensate line in place, and now it's time to check your installation. So now you want to power up, and I'm going to ask that you take a little bit of water, pour it into your condensate drain pan. It's going to flow down into the reservoir, and as it fills, that switch is going to kick on. Now the pump will run about two or three seconds, and then it will kick off, okay, because as it pumps the water out, and again, here's the discharge line, and that and the discharge line for the pump would run back up into the back of the unit and out through the um, uh, hole that you've put in the wall where you've mounted the unit itself. So, so now we want to check and make sure it kicks off and it kicks on. So you poured the water in, the, it, the float came up, kicked on, it ran about two or three seconds, and then you want to wait and make sure that it kicks off. So I'm a little bit of a overdoer as far as, but when I leave a job, I want to make sure that it's perfect. So I'm going to pour water in there somewhere between eight and ten times. And here's the reason why. One, 
in that period of time, you're going to check for any leaks that you might have anywhere through it. And I want a special note, the first two times that, that you engage this pump, it can be a little bit noisy. And what that is, it's burping the air out of the system. And after the second or third time, as far as kicking on and off, you've purged all the air and you'll enjoy that quiet 21 uh, decibel level as far as the quiet mini is concerned. So after we do that, we know we have no leaks. We have everything secure here. It's to the wall. We put the cover plate on and you're ready to go. We're in the final stages of installation. We have the pump connected to the wall. We now have the cover on it. Notice how well the colors match and also look at the low profile. It is, it is again about half the size of our competition and again, you will not believe how quiet this thing is. Do your customer and yourself a real favor and use the quiet mini split for your undermount solutions. I'm Doug Johnson with the Versatech and thank you for your attention.